welcome once again to EWTN's Bookmark. I'm Doug Keck, your host. Our special guest author, a new one for EWTN's uh, Bookmark show, Dr. Gerard M. Vershuren. We're going to talk to him about several of his books, including the one in the beginning. And welcome, uh, Dr. Vershuren, to EWTN's Bookmark. Great to see you. Thank you for inviting me to your show. It's my honor. That's great. And also, people will have uh, remembered that you were on with Father Mitch as well, talking about uh, some of this material. Now, tell us about your background, especially the first book is In the Beginning, and the second one is A Catholic Scientist Proved God Exists. So obviously, that's your background. Give us a little explanation of your background and how that led itself to you writing these books. And I am a scientist by training. I am a human geneticist. Phew, that's a mouthful. But I, uh, uh, so I am trained in science, and more and more I got interested in the philosophy of science. What is the background of science? How can scientists say what they say? So my book, In the Beginning, is, for instance, about that issue. It says it, the Bible makes it look like Earth was made our home. Mm -hmm. But science makes it look like it was a long, protracted sequence of coincidences. Who is right? Most people will say that's a conflict. And, right. and who wins in the conflict? Of course, science wins nowadays. Right. Thanks to uh, the media, academia, science is our new authority. And uh, so I thought it's about time that that uh, idea is going to be corrected. Is there really a conflict? Um, it looks it, I must say so. So right. if, uh, if Catholics say, I, I cannot combine all of that, or if their children say, I learned in school about science, that's a religion where you tell me, parents, can't be true. That, that's the conflict. So um, right. what some people say is uh, Catholics are Catholic on Sundays, right. if at all, and science is for weekdays. But uh, I want to fight that. So what was it about the Americans landing on the moon in 69 that had such an impact on you? Yeah, it was, again, a, a great thing that science achieved. So we said, see, now we, uh, we finally can go farther than the Earth. At one point, we thought the Earth was in the center of the universe. Now, at least we know it is not, thanks to uh, uh, the, the infamous Galileo, mm -hmm. uh, but still, the question remains, what do we do with God? Why is the universe so huge? And why do, did it take so long for everything to happen? So what I try to explain in my book, that there is no conflict between the two. So the, uh, if you look to, uh, in, in the Bible talks about days, and we talk about the creation. How was our universe created? Six days? and the seven days God rested. Science tells us it is a matter of billions of years. Mm -hmm. But I, I say in my book, the book of scripture makes it look like it went very fast, and the book of nature mm -hmm. tells us it went very slowly. Mm -hmm. um, that is not a, a new invention of mine, St. Augustine said already in the year, uh, let's say around 400, mm -hmm. it's the divine page that you must listen to. Mm -hmm. It's the book of the universe that you must observe. So Pope Benedict the 16 told us to see nature as a book whose author is God in the same way that scripture has God as its author. Mm -hmm. That was in fact a conviction shared in the past by many other Christian thinkers. So, so you don't you don't think everything started on October twenty second, four thousand four BC? Then no, that is what James Usher, uh, uh, Anglican Archbishop of in Ireland, said. He he calculated. He used the Book of Genesis and said we can calculate exactly when the Earth was created, as you said already. Saturday, October twenty second, in four thousand four. Unfortunately. That is not true, because the Genesis, the book of Genesis, the first chapter that talks about six days, uh, that is, he reads it as a chronological account. Mm -hmm. One thing happened after the other, but that is hard to believe, because that assumes that creation follows a timeline, day one, day two, day three, but it can't be for time 
was created by God too. Mm -hmm. Time is something that began at one point. And so time had to come into existence at one point, and it requires God to make that possible. Mm -hmm. Even Albert Einstein knew that time and space are part of the physical world. It's part of creation. And uh, though he was not a very religious scientist, at least he saw that part very clearly. So what I defend in my book is not the chronological reading, mm -hmm. but the structural reading. Right. And I, I probably have to explain that a little bit, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So um, what, what God does, he does things in six days, according to uh, Genesis 1. But he does that in two sets of three days. On the first set, God separates one thing from the other. On day one, he separates the light from the darkness. On day two, he separates the waters above the, the waters from the, the waters below the waters, the sky and the sea. And on day three, he separates the waters below from each other, thus giving rise to dry land in between the waters. That is called the work of the vision. Mm -hmm. And then in the, la in the next three days, he populates all of them. On day four, he, he puts the night and day with the sun, moon, and stars. On day five, he populates the sky and the sea with birds and fish. And on day six, he populates the land between the divided waters with animals. Most people don't think that that's a right interpretation, but what is important to realize that at the end of the process, it actually confirms that idea. It says, at the beginning, the earth was a formless void. So the division part cures the formless problem. And the adornment part fixes the void. Mm -hmm. issue. And at the end, it says, we are told the heavens and the earth were finished, that means by the vision, mm -hmm. and all their multitude, that is by adornment. So it's not just my invention. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Thomas Aquinas takes that on. A lot of church fathers say that the creation was done in two sets of days. Mm -hmm. So in my book, I try to defend that before I go into the scientific part for the scientific part, talks about billions of years. Now you made and a, that's where... Right, and you made a point near the, the end of the of this book, we, you brought up, and you had mentioned Pope Benedict uh, Emeritus uh, uh, earlier, you said about the fact that he, he said something similar when he rejected the modern notion that God is allowed to act in the spiritual domain but not in the material. God is God and does not operate merely on the level of ideas. If God does not have the power over matter, then he simply is not God. What was go what's going on in our society that he had to make a statement like that? Yeah, Pope Benedict had a gift to explain the, the real problems of this time. And he said, if, thanks to science, we think that everything is material. Science deals with what can be counted, quantified, measured. But there is also a spiritual dimension mm -hmm. to this universe. And creation is the spiritual issue. God created everything from nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing is not some mysterious kind of material. It is literally nothing. Mm -hmm. And I, I always joke when I, when I was teaching, I said, nothing comes from nothing. So nothing can come out of nothing unless God created something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. Science cannot do that. Science can only create something out of something else. And that is the, the, the magic of science. But the magic of God is that he can make things happen that are not material. He can also make material things. Mm -hmm. So for Benedict, it's very clear. He said, we, we, we have lost sight of that spiritual dimension of our creation. And once we lose that sight, we have actually lost sight of the whole universe. Now you write in, uh, in the next book, which I want to move on to, uh, from in the beginning into a Catholic scientist proves God exists, you, you make the point in the very beginning of the book that you dedicated this to the late Father James V. Shaw, S.J. Why him? 
Yeah, he, he was another one who had a gift to entice students who have been brainwashed by science, especially in universities like Georgetown, okay. but in any any kind of university. And he, he, he always asked the, the philosophical questions. He says, what is behind what you see and hear? There is much more to it. And he was a, he was a great philosopher. He, he was trained in the tradition of St. Thomas Aquinas. And he, uh, he, he, he knew how to put it very easily for students. So what he did is that he, he helped a lot of students to come back to Catholicism. He said that the, the real questions that we are missing is about spirituality and, and what explains everything. What is our existence worth? Where does our existence come from? Does it come from God? Or from our parents it's not or it's not either parents or god it comes from god but through our parents and um, and, and father shell had had a gift to to make that very clear much better than i am able to do right. i remember i had the pleasure actually of seeing him speak once in person he was excellent his books were always terrific you also say in the introduction here that the so-called proofs of God's existence belong to the domain of reason and are therefore accessible to any reasonable or rational being. Why do you want to make that point that it, that's where the proofs reside? The, the, the proofs do not come from science. When we talk about proofs, we always think, oh, science is the only place that can prove something without any doubt. Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, the proofs of God's existence really belong to logic and philosophy. And they, they always start with something that everyone has to accept, whether you are a believer or not. In other words, you don't have to be a Catholic to, to accept the proofs of God's existence. Uh, it, it's, it helps, but it, it's not really necessary. Right. So w w what, is, what does he start with? Yeah, there are, there are at least five proofs of God's existence, mm -hmm. but let, let's take the most common one. Everyone has to accept that everything that happens needs a cause. Mm -hmm. you, you try to fight that one. If, if, if a scientist says to me, oh, I discovered something that doesn't have a cause, then I think he's ripe for an asylum. So we, we, we have to make sure that everyone accepts that. And if you don't, you need help. Right. So if everything that happens needs a cause, then yeah, people will say, oh, why, why, why do I exist? What is the cause of that? My parents. And yeah, not really. Uh, for where do those parents come from? From grandparents. And we can go on and mm -hmm. on and on and on. But that doesn't mean we have explained anything. As I always like to say, if you have a whole bunch of causes going back in the past or, or wherever, the, the whole chain of causes is hanging in the air, floating in the air. In order for that chain to get a foundation to rest on, mm -hmm. or a beam to hang from, we need something else. And Thomas Aquinas calls that something else the first cause. Mm -hmm. All the causes science deals with, he calls secondary causes. Mm -hmm. But we need a first cause. And one of the proofs of God's existence says, if we don't have a first cause, then all the other causes are basically unexplained. I, I always use the example, if, if you have an endless series of IOUs, then we still don't have real currency. The yeah. real currency does not come from the IOUs. It's a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. But if, if to get it a real currency in this case right. not literal of course we need a first cause and that argument is usually called the argument for motion and and i maintain that every human being who has a normal mind has to accept everything that happens needs a cause right. so if you accept that and if you accept that that all those causes together don't explain anything we end up with God. That's where the buck starts, as Peter Kreeft always says. Exactly. That's where 
Right. Yeah, that's, we should get you yeah, working for the Social stop. Security Administration, maybe to make them realize about all these IOUs and how meaningless <laughs> many of them are. But you also say in a, in a book, and not to give it away, right in the video, you say, uh, so d does God exist? You say the resounding answer is yes. Then you say, the answers come from me, a scientist who's also a devoted Catholic. And then I thought to myself, well, that's why you come up with that answer. And you, you, you anticipate that. You say, please don't assume ahead of time that these answers are suspicious for the Catholic Church has always affirmed them. Don't have to be Catholic to understand these. So what do you say to someone who says, well, you're coming out of a predisposition, you're a Catholic, so you want to prove that God exists? Because the argument that I just uh, explained briefly mm -hmm. has nothing Catholic in it. Mm -hmm. it's, it. It just says science is about secondary causes. Everything needs a cause that comes into existence. So, and then I say, but there has to be a, a foundation, a source where that all comes from. And again, you don't have to be a Catholic to accept that. Mm -hmm. It is uh, uh, everyone who has a common mind can accept that. And I know th th there have been a few atheists who deny that. Mm -hmm. and, and they attack the argument on the wrong basis. They gotcha. say, yeah, but the, the first cause is, uh, is also uh, a cause that has to be explained. No, mm -hmm. Thomas Aquinas doesn't say that everything has a cause. It says everything that came into existence has a cause. Mm -hmm. And it, it's nonsense to say that something can bring itself into existence. Mm -hmm. For then, you are already assuming that it exists before it came into existence. Mm -hmm. And that is a logical error. Everyone can see that that is an error. Uh, again, you don't have right. to be a Christian, a Catholic, to believe that. Okay, the, the, the question is, of course, is, is that God of the proof of God, is, is that the, the God of Jesus Christ? And I would say, at least he is the god of jesus christ is at least the existence itself the contingency the motion itself mm -hmm. the design itself uh, it's the god of abraham isaac and jacob is much more mm -hmm. i will i'm the first one to uh, to honor that idea and, and that's where my catholicism comes in right i thought but, it was uh, interesting that that, that uh, you know you kind of go through the why is God a God? Why is God invisible? All these kind of things that seem, you know, to follow through with a Catholic scientist's proof of God exists. But then you say, is God the God of all religions, as you started to talk about there? And, and I thought it was kind of interesting that you brought that point up. And you, you actually talk about Islam a little bit, and you connect it to Arianism. How so? Yeah, because the, the, the God of Jesus Christ is a Trinitarian God. It is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that I cannot prove through logic alone. So we, we learned that from Jesus Christ, and we learned it basically already in the beginning through the Old Testament. There are mm -hmm. some indications there. Though the, the, the word Trinity is never mentioned in the Bible, no. Of course not, because the, 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 that was not an existing concept at that time. But through Jesus Christ, we knew that he was the Son of God, and so he was, like God himself, all-perfect, all-powerful, all-present, all-knowing. And Arianism says, oh, he is just a creation from God. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing Trinitarian in there. And, and I claim in my book, that Islam, and I'm not the only one, by the way, mm. that, that was already said uh, many centuries ago, that Islam was basically more a sect of Christianity, originally, that was based on Arianism. Mm -hmm. And the Arians were very strong. Uh, at the time of Muhammad, there were uh, uh, most of the emperors of the Roman Empire were mm. Arians. And all the, the Visigoths and all those people that came from Asia, they were Aryans. So Islam found a good basis there for their Aryan heresy. I call it a heresy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and, and that's why I'm saying is the God of the proofs, the God of all religions, um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. uh, Muslims will not agree with all the things that I mentioned, all perfect, all powerful, all present, all knowing. 
they, they make God more like a tyrant mm. who, who makes his own decisions. He's not a God of love. Okay. So that's why I connected with Arianism. And why did you decide to do the book in a, in a Q&A format? Because uh, I, when I worked with students, they, they always came up with problems. They said, yeah, but, but, but. And, and besides, let's not forget that Thomas Aquinas had basically the idea too. He, uh, he, he positions something and then he attacks it. And then he goes into the attacks and, and shows why the attacks are not right. That's why I did the question and answer format. Right. In the answers, I show that what people brought against my arguments, that they were basically uh, not right. Or I try to explain why there is that confusion. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope I succeeded doing that. So that's why I say in, in that book, mm -hmm. yeah, there is a question each time, and if you ask a question, I am going to try to answer it as best as I can. Okay. So that's A Catholic Scientist Proves God Exists. You also have a third book we wanted to touch on in closing minutes, which is entitled 60 Catholics Who Changed the World. How did you decide upon the number 60? Uh, by, I can't say by trial and error, but I try to... Uh, to find out the, the, the most important ones. And then I came up with a little bit more than 60, 70 or so. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought I, I will cut down for some of them are so unknown probably, but we are living in a time that we have forgotten our own history. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we forget what our roots were. And especially nowadays, we not only we uh, not only demolish statues, we also demolish memories and traditions. So there are a lot of Catholic traditions started by Catholic people who affected our world enormously. Mm -hmm. so our, our schools started with Catholics. Right. Our hospitals started with Catholics. I explained that in my book. But uh, you, you ask me what's, uh, why those 60, mm -hmm. um, it, it could have been many more, I'm right. sure. But I, 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 I weighed them all. I thought this is an important one, that's an important one. I wanted some from healthcare, some mm -hmm. from education, some from philosophy, some from science, right. and some from social issues. Well, it's interesting because you mentioned uh, about the statue and you've got uh, uh, Junipero Serra as one of the people that you actually talk about. You also, and this is uh, obviously a little self-serving, our own Mother Angelica made the list. Oh, yes. She definitely, she gave Catholics a voice. And she did that like Gutenberg, the, the first printer of the Catholic Bibles, mm -hmm. gave Catholics a Bible. And, and she gave Catholics a voice, much more than a voice. She gave them a voice through mass media. Mm -hmm. And she realized how important mass media are. And she was a Catholic who changed the world mm -hmm. by giving them that voice. That's why she's in there. And she right. should be in there. Now, of, of all the ones that you have in here, which one personally impacted you the most in your life? Yeah, I, as I told you in the beginning, I'm a scientist. So I, uh, what affected me the most is probably Father George Lemaitre. Mm -hmm. He's the man who came up with the Big Bang. And uh, the Big Bang was, a, was really very controversial mm -hmm. because at that time, all scientists thought that the universe was eternal. Even Einstein, the, the, one of the best physicists, believed that the universe was eternal. Where did that come from? I, I have no idea, but I think deep down, they were all afraid if there is a, a beginning of the universe, then we have a point of creation. And that is for a lot of scientists, it's very, uh, they don't like it. Mm. So he, he, Einstein found it even repugnant. And, uh, and then later on, uh, another astronomist, Fred Hoyle, he, he was an atheist, and he disliked the idea that there was a beginning of the universe, so he, he mocked it with the words Big Bang. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Nowadays, we take it as a, as a great word, but for him, wow. it, was, uh, it was repugnant, too. He, uh, so he, he, he could not accept that there was a beginning of time for that brings a creator in. Mm-hmm. Where, where did that beginning come from? So Father George Lemaitre mm-hmm. was the one who, and a great scientist, he said there was a beginning of time. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning, uh, Alfred, uh, Albert Einstein, said, that's nonsense, that is not possible. He attacked Father Lemaitre. They, mm-hmm. they talked a lot together, by the way. They were, they were good friends. Mm-hmm. But he could not accept that uh, Lemaitre said that. And now we know, uh, you know, science is not uh, all powerful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we know that by now. So uh, finally, he said to Lemaitre, sorry, that was the biggest blunder I ever made in my life, that I attacked your Big Bang. The, the word Big Bang was not known at that time yet. That was thanks to Fred Hoyle, or thanks, I don't know whether it was fame. So let, let me just quote what Father Lemaitre said. He said, I have no conflict to reconcile. Science has not shaken my faith in religion, and religion has never caused me to question the conclusions I reached by scientific methods. That, that could have been my own motto in life. So you ask me what inspired me the right. most? Father George Lemaitre. He was a professor in, in Belgium at the Catholic University. Right, and that's a good coda for this interview. Of course, spanning from 60 Catholics who changed the world through a Catholic science to prove God's exists, and also in the beginning, of course, with the Big Bang. Thank you so much, Dr. Gerard M. Bershuren, for joining us here on Bookmark. Look for the books available through the EWTN Religious Catalog, EWTNRC.com. Join us next time on Bookmark. Thanks.